Alex Bowman addresses rumors about his job. Brad Kozlowski talks possible RFK expansion. Martin Truex Jr. is getting a familiar face back. And will the Bristol race for the Xfinity Series be Dale Jr.'s last in NASCAR? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So when it comes to silly season, there's a lot of rumors that continually fly around and I'll chase most of them. I'll try to get more information on them. And the only thing I ever tell you guys on videos or on Twitter are things that have been confirmed multiple times. So there's been this Alex Bowman rumor that's been floating around for well over a month at this point that he'll be replaced at Hendrick Motorsports at the end of the year and he'll move to Spire Motorsports and take over the number seven car. I haven't brought it up in any of the silly season update videos because there's just a few different variants variations of this rumor and nothing really seems to be concrete yet. So that's why I haven't talked about it. But Doral McClear on Tuesday on their latest episode alluded to the fact that certain drivers haven't been announced for certain rides yet uh, when talking about who would be eliminated from the first round of the playoffs and specifically Alex Bowman. So they're alluding to this rumor. I went ahead and clipped that uh, bit that I would put in here, but Mike Davis would come after me like he's Teresa Earnhardt for copyright infringement. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but essentially is what they said is that, you know, certain drivers haven't been announced for certain rides. So I clipped that a bit of audio and then added context to it saying that they're referring to this Alex Bowman rumor uh, that he'll be out of the 48 car at the end of the year and move over to Spire. That's what they're talking about. One thing that annoys me about NASCAR silly season stuff is when reporters and people on podcasts say things and they're incredibly vague. The vagary is super annoying. Either say it and say what you're talking about or don't say anything at all, which is why I haven't talked about this Bowman rumor, even though probably could have got a ton of clicks off of it, right? But no, it's not concrete enough to talk about, so we didn't. The unfortunate part is now the internet went uh, ablaze, uh, like with napalm on Tuesday night when I posted that and then tons of people were talking about it. You've got uh, NASCAR media members calling people dumbasses. Things got out of control. Not saying I'm completely responsible for it, but definitely saying I stoked the fire for sure. And the part that sucks about it is the fact that Alex Bowman now had to answer all of these questions on Wednesday for the playoff media days instead of talking about his team heading into the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. But listen to what Bowman had to say. You know your plans for 2025? Yeah, um, yeah, that rumor has, has certainly been annoying. Um, definitely, uh, obviously, my contract's through the end of 26, and um, all I can tell you is like I'm, what my bosses have told me, and that that's there's there's no plans to change anything. And um, yeah, rumors are, are just rumors. So hopefully, they'll get their announcements done. So my rumors stop obviously and um yeah as far as i know i'm driving the 48 next year and, and nothing's changing so alex bowman says he'll be back in the 48 car next year he said he called his bosses they've reassured him i'm not here to dispute any of that do i think conversations maybe have gone on behind the scenes i would lean towards yes probably uh they have who would replace alex bowman as part of that rumor i'm not touching that because like i said there's a couple different iterations of it and two of the names are absurd they're not kyle bush it's not kyle bush so all the people that want that to happen his name has not been mentioned in any of these uh, rumors, but it's it's a wild one at that. And it's one where you're like, OK, if something like this happens, that's, you know, seismic, it, it, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But for for Bowman, it's unfortunate. And one thing people on the Internet keep coming back to is the fact that he has a multi year deal through 2026. I just need people to understand that contracts look really good on a press release. Contracts in the grand scheme of things don't really matter that much. If Hendrick Motorsports wants Alex Bowman out, guess what? They're going to pay him out and he's going to be gone. Corey LaJoy had a multi-year deal at Spire for next year and beyond. Guess what? He's not driving that car next year because they can be bought out. So the Alex Bowman rumor has been floating around for a few weeks. Um, Dorman Berclair kind of blew the top off of it this week. Do I think it's going to happen? I think it's still very much 50-50. It's not like any other Silly Season stuff. Like I said, if I'm going to update anybody on Silly Season on the on YouTube, TikTok, or on Twitter, it's because there's concrete information behind it. And so far, all my information has been batting a 1,000 up to this point. This is one where it still feels very up in the air. Didn't want to talk about it, but people want to kind of blow the top off of it. We'll talk about it at this point. So Alex Bowman addresses his rumors, says he's going to be back. We'll have to just wait and see at this point. Also during NASCAR media days, Brad Keselowski talked about possible expansion or was asked about possible expansion for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Now, obviously, all of this stems from the Adam Stern report in the Sports Business Journal a couple weeks ago that said that RFK will land the Kroger sponsorship when it departs from JTG Doherty Racing at the end of the year, moves over to RFK. So much sponsorship comes along with that that there's been speculation that they could start up a third third car for next season. Brad was asked about it a couple weeks ago, and he said, you know, 
they weren't ready to comment on it one way or another, but he did think that if you had enough sponsorship, you could run the car as an open car, as an unchartered car. So they would not have a guaranteed starting spot with the charter. Do I think that's going to happen? Uh, that remains to be seen. But Brad Keselowski said uh, today on Wednesday that he wasn't ready to talk about it yet, indicated that according to Bob Pockers, there's still probably another month or so to go uh, before they have anything finalized or anything to say on that. Of course, in that Adam Stern article, it was referenced to that Ryan Priest could be in line to land in a third RFK car. Remains to be seen again if he's a guy that's going to get there. Haven't heard any rumors about Priest. Haven't really heard any rumors about this third car if it does in fact start up. But if they do in fact land Kroger as they're expected to, that is a massive get. That's a Fortune 100 company. That is a 36 race sponsor over at JTG. Would it be 36 in this situation? That remains to be seen. But that would be absolutely massive. And RFK just kind of becomes a Cincinnati company between uh, Fifth Third Bank as well as Kroger to behemoths of the Queen City both on RFK cars, we might just have to become an RFK podcast at that point. Now for a real quick check-in on Martin Truex Jr. He said during media days that he will have a familiar face back atop his pit box for the 2025 Daytona 500, which is going to happen, but for still an unspecified team, which I still think it's fully going to be 2311 racing in a fourth car for them. Cole Pern will be back on top of the pit box calling the race for Martin Truex Jr. as his crew chief. Of course, the two of them had so much success together over at Furniture Row and then over at Joe Gibbs Racing before Cole Pern decided to retire from NASCAR. Won a championship together, won a bunch of races together, and getting Cole back would certainly be an interesting return for the two of them. It'd be like Jimmy getting Chad back uh, for his select starts over at Legacy or Jeff Gordon doing select starts and getting Ray Everham back or something like that. I mean, there are certain guys, certain crew chief driver combinations that have this bit of legendary status. Like I said, Chad and Jimmy are one. Ray and Jeff are another one. Cole Pern and Martrex Jr. certainly approached that. Cole Pern walked to the beat of his own drummer. He definitely did not fit the NASCAR mold. Wearing a t-shirt on top of the pit box, his entire attitude talking about tungsten butt plugs. The guy is his own character, and I'm excited to see him come back. Do I think it's going to be this magical return to glory for Martin Truex Jr.? Not necessarily, but I definitely think that the switch from Cole Pern to James Small, there's been a bit of a disconnect in Martin Truex Jr.'s career uh, since that change. And I'm not sure if he would have had the, you know, the drop off in a sense if Cole had remained on top of his pit box. But I guess Cole's going to come down from the Canadian wilderness and call this race uh, once he gets, I assume he's going to have to snow, uh, snowmobile his way out of a Golden Alpine Ventures. Is that where he's at now? Uh, the ski resort he bought up in Canada. Either way, it's cool to see Cole Pern come back. Moving on to the last topic of the day, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on his podcast this week addressed whether or not this Xfinity race at Bristol uh, in a couple weeks time would be his last ever NASCAR start in any series. And I would put the clip in here, but like I said before, Mike Davis is going to come after me like he's Teresa Earnhardt, and I'm just not really willing to play that copyright strike game. So Dale Jr. on his podcast said, quote, so everybody's like, is this really your last race? And I'm like, probably. Yeah, sure. yeah, pretty sure at least I'm going to keep running my late model for a little while, but yeah. So if you want to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. race, it sounds like you're going to have to go to that Friday night Bristol race for the Xfinity Series in a couple weeks time to watch him race one last time in that number 88 Hellman's car. Uh, if it really is his last race, he's certainly going out with a bit of a bang. I mean, last year he was in contention to win this race. He led laps on speed, driving up in the front, hanging out in the top five, caught on fire, was excited seemingly about catching on fire, which was odd <laughs> in a sense, but then got to ride to victory lane with Justin Allgaier after he won the race. So Dale's just going out there and having fun in these situations. He, of course, is 50 years old. He's getting a bit older now. Maybe he doesn't want to continue to do it. And the level of competitiveness of the Xfinity series continues to just rise year in and year out. And he's not in these cars as often as he once was. So having to get into these cars and be competitive right away is a bit of a struggle at times. So if this really is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s last start, it's a bit of a bummer, but he has looked really competitive every single time he's gotten into this Xfinity car, whether it be at Richmond when he's running top five, getting top tens there, Homestead when he was ripping the wall, I think getting like a P6 finish, uh, or going over and running Martinsville, said he'll never do that again, or even these British races as well. Every time he gets into one of these Xfinity cars, he still remains very competitive, and it's fun to see. It helps the racetrack sell tickets. It allows people to go out and see Dale race one more time, and every year, kind of like, man, is this really going to be his last year? This might actually be his last year. I would still not be shocked to see him come back and run the number eight one time in 2025, if that is something that they would want to do, but if this really is his last hurrah, 
that Friday night Xfinity Series race is going to be must watch television. Whether he's in contention or not, he deserves a proper send off. Remember, that race will also be on the CW, will not be on USA or NBC, just so everybody can keep track of that. The final eight races of the, the Xfinity Series uh, schedule are on the CW this year before switching over to the CW full time next year. So if it is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s last ride, hopefully he gets a send off that he absolutely deserves. Seeing him get back into a late model, though, continually will be very fun. Uh, you can expect him to be at Florence or any track that's going to really eat tires because he's talked about how he's just not as fit as he used to be to be able to go out there and run qualifying laps every single time. But at a track where you have to ride and conserve tires, that is a track that he can remain competitive on and one that he would like to keep racing. So for Dale, maybe Bristol is his last ride. And if it's not, well, we'll see him again next year for maybe the next last ride. All right. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Alex Bowman situation, Brad Kozlowski and RFK, Cole Pern coming back for the 2025 Daytona 500 with Martin Truex Jr. and Dale Jr. And this possibly being his last ever NASCAR race the coming up, what, two weeks time at Bristol. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.